Hi everyone, it's Sam, NFT Statistics with your Proof Daily NFT Countdown. Woke up this morning, not really sure what to talk about, and then did some work, and now I'm pretty pumped. I think there's a lot of cool stuff to talk about, so let's get to it. Starting with a quick market overview, ETH volumes again in that 19,000 ETH range, kind of where we've been for most of the week. Now, one thing that's interesting is that actual number of trades was down a fair bit. One of the days with fewer trades of the past couple months, the difference there, ETH volume's high, trades low. It's because the average price per trade was a little bit higher, largely because that 800 ETH uh, gold fur ape trade yesterday, as well as the zombie punk. Uh, in terms of floor prices, they are broadly flat on both the large cap and mid cap index. Uh, in terms of art blocks projects that had volume, Chromey Squiggles had the most, but just three trades there. Anti Cyclone had three trades. We're actually going to have William Mapan on the podcast quite soon, so I'm excited about that. And then Primera by Mitchell and Yoon, want to highlight that because the floor price really rose there. Now, what is this project? It's a generative art project that Grant Yoon was one of the participants in. Now we know that most of his work is illustration, so this is a pretty unique project. You can see there that the floor has gone from 2.5 to nearly 5 ETH in just a couple weeks. Just people want Grant Yoon art. I think that's what's happening here. Uh, also VV Checks, again, gotta keep talking about it because it keeps pumping. Floor went up to about 2.5 ETH yesterday. Uh, you can see how the metadata changed. That's the image for today. And then lastly, a kid called Beast. We talked about this a couple of weeks ago on the show, really just rocketed from 0.5 ETH to 1 ETH over the past couple of days. So a nice 2X there, really fun project, really cool art, a bit of a, a bit of an AR angle going on here with 3D collectibles. They had, a, they had a spaces yesterday that I think got people excited. So congrats to holders there. Story number two, Reddit Super Bowl NFTs. Reddit announced a couple of days ago that they're gonna partner with the NFL to make some digital uh, digital collectibles that people can uh, buy on Reddit. They always like to say digital collectibles, always avoid the NFT, the word NFT. That's worked pretty well for them. This is what they look like. You got the Eagles, the Chiefs, and then a couple more. NFT Gators you know, recently put a story out about how Reddit added 4 million newly minted Polygon-based NFTs in just two months. I think we've heard this story a few times about how the wallet number is absolutely booming. It's over 6 million wallets have been created on Reddit. Now, I kind of want to dig into a little bit what this means, how big of a deal is it, is this something we should be pumped about, stuff like that. Now, just the basic numbers, 6 million plus Reddit wall, uh, Polygon wallets. To put that into ETH perspective, only 2.3 million wallets have ever bought an ETH NFT on major exchanges. Only 248,000 have bought in 2023, and only 650,000 have minted ETH NFTs. So, uh, yeah, at face value, this 6 million number is really, really high. Now, did the Super Bowl partnership impact it? You can see that over the past couple of days, we have had about 100,000 new wallets added. Now, I personally am one of those 100,000. I just added a wallet. I wanted to go through the process to see what it means. I picked the Eagles because Jalen Hurts was on my fantasy team this year, helped me finish second place in the league. So I picked the Eagle one. Let's go. All you got to do is add a password. Okay, so you pick your avatar and then you add a password and boom, you got a wallet uh, and you can take it and you can do different things with it. So I think that, you know, one of the interesting things here is like, yes, people are creating wallets, but it's a very different process from the NFT process we're used to. This is basically just as easy as picking a picture and a password and suddenly you have it. No money involved, no cryptocurrency, just pick one. So it makes a little more sense now that so many people have minted, it's just so easy to create a wallet. And you know, the real barrier to entry though, in my view, the hard part with NFTs is getting people to pay money for the JPEGs, pay money for the NFTs. That's the big step. And we haven't really seen that in Reddit quite yet. If you look at this chart, this is the unique buyer count of, of avatars on, on Reddit. You can see that it's basically below 100 per day. If you look at people who are actually paying, paying on exchanges, and putting money into new Reddit NFTs compared to ETH, you know, obviously just gets completely dwarfed. So I think it's cool what's happening. I think it's interesting that people are connecting their avatars there with a digital identity, with, a, with an image. That's kind of what we do in NFTs. And, and it's great to see so many other people getting into it. I don't think you've seen that step yet to say there's huge proof of concept when it comes to the buying, which is, which is what ETH NFTs are all about. Third story to talk about, Killer Bears Open Edition. So Killer Bears is kind of an interesting project. I've had my eyes on it for a while. You know, they have only 3,333 NFTs and only 918 owners, but it's a, it's a small knit community. 
really, you know, really kind of active on Twitter. Uh, these are some of the images. Kind of have this like killer bears thing going on for sure in that right one. Um, they have a little bit of animation, but they're interesting because the project's actually been doing really, really well, basically throughout the bear market. You know, if you go back to to July 1st, you're looking at a, a one slightly lower than one E floor price and we're at four right now. So it's really just kind of been a, a pretty much a one-way street uh, for this project. They're also one of the first projects to do an open edition. And this is what I think is interesting. They announced this last week. They were going to do an open edition at 420 on Friday. This is what the open edition looks like. And the price was 0.02 E. Now, a little bit about how that did. They minted 49,000. So they raised 984 ETH. $1.64 million were raised. They also announced a burn mechanism recently. And since then, the floor is up 3x. So we'll go into a little bit more of that. One thing that was interesting was that they did not give this NFT though to their OG holders. So the people who own those 3,333 had to mint them just like everybody else. I asked them, why didn't you do this? They said, well, we've given you know the OG holders a lot. These four NFTs are all free airdrops they gave to OG holders. You can see in that, these are the floor ones. You can see in that is about 1.5 ETH. So they're like, this was a chance to get new people involved. Uh, here is the announcement from their website. Uh, they said, of course, this is the first path when they announced the burn, but more lie ahead, choose wisely. You know, and I think that this is a basic theme. Like when they start doing these burns and they gamify, you know, the fact that you can burn a couple of the open editions into something new, you don't want people just to burn and then be done. You always want to keep more anticipation, more gamification going. And they did that as well. Again, the price in response to this for Kilobears has been pretty strong. Floor is up above four ETH again. And these are all the sales and then the median sales price uh, for the open edition. You can see it happened at 0.02 ETH, sat around there for a few days. And once they announced the burn mechanism, shot up to about 0.06. So the floor is around there right now. You know, so congratulations here. I think like it's interesting to see with all these things, you wonder where it ends. How long is it going to go on for? But clearly some value created really quickly for people who did this open edition for Killer Bears. And then lastly, as I was doing this deck, there was a trade for 40.54 ETH for this Killer Bear. This is the highest sale ever, at least on OpenSea. There was one at 40 ETH. But this project, I would just say, you know, I want to do more research here because this is an interesting one. There's clearly a lot of attention uh, and a lot of good things happening there. Lastly. Just going to talk about three notable trades that happened. We all know that Jimmy.eth sold a gold fur ape for 800 ETH. He plowed 111 ETH into Twin Flames, uh, which is a photography project by Justin Aversano that has images of twins. Uh, one of the earliest, most successful uh, NFT projects, certainly one of the most successful photography projects ever. Now, it's kind of interesting, the sale price at 111, you know, Jimmy just made all that money. So not surprising. He was willing to pay up a little bit. But you can see that it was pretty far above the floor price. This chart here looks at the floor. You can see it's very liquid. So the floor is basically all over the place. But the real volume in this project has been kind of in that 40 to 50 ETH range. There were two other sales over the past couple of days at 43 and 38 ETH. So certainly a big buy for Jimmy, but re really cool to see. Always good to see uh, artists getting, you know, getting traction with their work. And obviously this is one of the absolute greats. Another sale that was interesting to me, a Meridian by Matt Delorier, sold for 19 ETH. Uh, you know, the reason I thought this was interesting is kind of the same thing as with Twin Flames. You know, this is not a unique Meridian. It's very aesthetic. I think those colors are very, very cool. The polychrome, all the different colors make something really unique, but it was bought for 19 ETH versus the floor over the past 17, or over the, over the past seven months has been around 10 ETH. So someone really paid up for this. I uh, always love to see it when that happens, people picking the NFT that they like, that fits them, that they want to hold. Uh, but certainly pretty rich price here. Now, if you look at the, the rarity, it was actually rarity 981 out of a thousand. So not rare, but you know, again, aesthetic. And one of the things I always say is if you have an NFT that you want to sell at some point, it's not like a forever NFT, it always helps to list it at a high price and see if someone falls in love with it and wants to pay it up, pay up. I call that the Justin Bieber rule. We all remember Justin paid, you know, that a million over a million dollars for basically a floor eight because it was the one that resonated with him. So I'll, that's something I always uh, recommend. And then the third trade, the last trade I want to talk about, this is called the Prayer. It sounds like a whisper by Neural Bricolage. This was actually two days ago, but I wanted to highlight it today. This sold for 14 ETH. Um, you know, it's just kind of an interesting piece, largely AI based. But what Neural Bricolage does is often uses her 
her photos, her prints, and mixes them into the AI model. I'm not sure if that's what she did here, but overall, just a really interesting artist to keep track of. She's had some huge sales, and some of these are actually just her own kind of her, her own drawings, but most of them have some AI component uh, that use AI and blend that with either photos, her work, or just AI straight up from the prompts. You can see she's had sales of 25 ETH, 27 and a half, 20 and 10. Uh, still, you know, 14 ETH is a really good sale and congrats to her for that. That's all for me today. Hope you enjoyed the show. Do like it, you know, do uh, subscribe to our channel. I'm curious, which NFTs do you guys think are interesting? What should I be talking about on the show? Comment on that below. You know, I read every single comment, so I'll check it out. We'll be back tomorrow. Looking forward to it. Have a good day.